Recently, Lenovo has started another brand in the name of the ThinkBook series. It was aimed at people who need ThinkPad security levels but don't want the industrial design. Indeed the company delivers on style with their second generation ThinkBook 15. It is paired with the low voltage Tiger Lake processors, so you should expect decent performance out of it. That's of course if Lenovo managed to design a good cooling system. The ThinkBook 15 is a relatively light machine. It weighs 1.7 kilograms and is about 19 millimeters thick. Furthermore, the manufacturer uses aluminum for the lid, while the base is plastic. Unfortunately, that leads to some unwanted flex in the chassis. Other than that, the keyboard is spill-resistant and features a backlight. On the other hand, the typing experience is not great, as the key travel is a bit too short for us. Yet again, there is an optional fingerprint reader, sharing the same allocation as the power button. Lenovo also tried to elevate its support game by including a service hotkey on the keyboard. This notebook offers USB Type-C charging via its 3.2 generation 2 port, which also doubles as a DisplayPort output. Additionally, you get a Thunderbolt 4 connector, two USB Type-A 3.2 generation 1 ports, and an HDMI 1.4B connector. Next come the LAN connector, audio jack, and SD card reader. So, Lenovo has soldered either 4 or 8 GB of memory onto this device's motherboard. However, you can expand it via one SODOM slot that can fit up to 32 GB of RAM. It's also good to know that the laptop can fit two M.2 PCIe X4 SSDs, and offers a 2.5-inch SATA drive bay. Unfortunately, they don't supply mounting accessories in the retail box. If you want to see how to open the laptop, you can check out our teardown video. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. We weren't expecting to see that, but this device comes with either an IPS or a TN panel with a 1080p resolution. Of course, we've chosen the IPS one and we advise you to do the same. It excels with wide viewing angles and a good contrast ratio of 1200 to 1. On the other side, the sRGB coverage is unimpressive with only 51%. Thankfully though, it doesn't use PWM for brightness adjustment, so you are safe to work for long periods of time. Here, the battery lasted for more than 8 hours of web browsing, or about 6 hours of video playback. Not great, not terrible. The highest spec configuration here utilizes the Core i7-1165G7 and GeForce MX450. The dual heat pipe cooling solution seems to do a decent job, as the Core i7-1165G7 maintains a frequency of about 2.9 GHz for more than 15 minutes straight. And at the same time, it wasn't too hot either. Weirdly enough, our unit's integrated graphics was struggling. However, there is a solution for that, and it is to put a memory stick in the free SODOM slot. That way, the RAM will work in dual channel mode, making productivity stuff and gaming better. Other than that, you receive a Thunderbolt 4 connector, optional fingerprint reader, an SD card slot, and ultimately, a comfortable viewing experience, due to the lack of harmful PWM. If you'd like to find more information about this machine, you can see all of the tests we've performed in our in-depth review. The link is in the video description below.